The median nerve provides innervation to digits one, two, three, and half of digit four. So when performing this test, it is important to maintain contact over all of the fingers as well as the thumb. So we can grasp our hand over the patient's fingers to maintain them in extension and place our index finger over the patient's thumb to hold it in extension also. This gives us good control of the fingers, the hand, and the wrist. Start the test by holding the patient's hand in the pistol grip technique, then depress the patient's shoulder. With a closed fist, we can press our fist down into the table and support our body weight. We can then move the patient's shoulder into abduction by resting it on our thigh as we elevate that arm into further abduction. Once we reach about 90 to 100 degrees of shoulder abduction, we can then introduce full shoulder external rotation. The next step is to add in elbow extension and then wrist extension. And we are looking for the reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms. We can then use desensitizing additions and sensitizing additions to differentiate neural from non-neural structures. A desensitizing addition that we can use is reducing the amount of wrist extension, so bringing the wrist into some flexion, or reducing the amount of elbow extension by bringing the elbow into flexion. Another desensitizing addition is ipsilateral cervical flexion. So asking our patient to bring their ear towards the same shoulder, and this should reduce the patient's symptoms. A sensitizing addition in the cervical spine involves taking their ear towards their opposite shoulder and this may reproduce or increase the patient's familiar symptoms. Now, if we put that all together, we have shoulder depression, abduction of the shoulder, full external rotation of the shoulder, extension of the elbow, then extension of the wrist. Desensitizing addition at the wrist, desensitizing addition at the elbow. If the patient is highly sensitive and irritable with a suspected cervical radiculopathy, we perform the same test procedure. However, we may need to provide them with some assistance with ipsilateral cervical flexion and contralateral cervical flexion. So if we reproduce the patient's familiar symptoms and then we want to desensitize them at the cervical spine, we introduce some passive ipsilateral cervical flexion and then we re-perform the test. And we're looking for a change in their symptoms during this test. To add in a sensitizing addition, we can move them into contralateral cervical flexion. And once again, we can re-perform the test looking for any changes in their symptoms. An alternative approach to performing this test involves using our arm to depress the patient's shoulder, resting our elbow down into the table. We can then cradle their arm with our arm, supporting their elbow with our hand. We can then use that to fully externally rotate the patient's shoulder, extend their elbow, and then move them into wrist extension. This is a nice supportive way to perform this test, particularly for patients who may be highly sensitive and highly irritable or a little bit apprehensive with movement. 